start off uh, just quick introduction of our company. Um, we'll go into more detail in just a moment, but first, um, we are Agital. We were formerly known as Exclusive Concepts um, and Exclusive, depending on when you you uh, came to find out about us. Um, we've been around since 1997, and most of you know us as Exclusive Concepts or Exclusive until these past two years have been working on this new version of who we'll be. And Agital is a brand that we've been developing behind the scenes. Well, uh, we've been working on mergers and acquisitions, bringing more people into more companies into the fold. And uh, this month it was it was time to make the big switch from exclusive to Agital. We haven't really changed as a business, except we are enhanced with um, our partners and other members of the family, the, the corporate family that allow us to do quite a bit more. We'll get into that. First, personal introductions. My name is Nick Rajpal. I'm the VP of Marketing Sciences here uh, at Agito. And I joined 15 years ago to develop our solutions like SEO, conversion, email, Google Ads, and Amazon, as well as our, our holistic strategy team. And today, I oversee the strategy department. Okay. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Antonellis. I'm the VP of Own Media Strategy at Agital. Um, I've been here for almost 13 years. Um, previous to my role um, working with Nick on the strategy side, I was managing our, our SEO, um, CRO, email, SMS, and content teams. Um, yeah, excited to go through some of these case studies with you today. And Greg, would you like to intro? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Greg Tebow. I'm the junior member of the team, having only been here about eight years uh, at Agital. I am a senior manager of Owned Media, and I'm also the lead for our conversion rate optimization service. So very excited to be with you today and ready to dive in. Awesome. 35 years between the three of us here. Um, folks, uh, we want you to remember Agital. We want you to get to know us. Uh, we have a, a brand new website. Um, Agile, if you think about it, it's kind of the combination of um, Agile and Digital. But there's also kind of um, a purpose in there as well, which is to agitate. Um, we want to get out there and, and shift things up. And the first way we're shifting things up is we've kind of seen that the digital marketing industry has kind of built itself in two hemispheres. There are those who our thinkers and those who are doers. And we found this rare balance over these last 30 years of being able to do both. Um, we've been around uh, since the late 90s. We have over 350 full and part-time employees across almost all the states in the US and six offices. We also manage a lot of ad spend, over 250 million uh, per year. We drive over a billion dollars in sales for clients, direct sales. Uh, over 500 clients and 20 partnerships, which we'll get into in a moment, just to get a sense of some of our clients, uh, people you know and trust, uh, from HP to the Super Bowl, and uh, some brands that uh, we'd love for you to check out, Caswell Massey, Unique Vintage. And as we've developed our our internal family of, of four businesses, we've also built an outside family of partnerships. Um, we had knocked on Google's door in 2009 and said, you should work with agencies. And we helped form the entire partner program. Uh, we are Big Commerce's Agency of the Year. We're Microsoft's Rising Star Agency. We're Clavio's top partner. We're Yappo's Agency of the Year. We manage 14 of the top 20 TikTok shops accounts. But we've also been doing conversion rate testing since the day after Google released its conversion testing tool, making us one of the first agencies out there to ever bring clients into conversion testing. Greg, can you uh, acclimate us a little to, to the program? Absolutely. So I think it'll help here just to define the term conversion rate optimization or CRO as we often um, you know, utilize that acronym. So conversion rate optimization 
know, we think of as a systematic process for increasing the percentage of visitors to a website to take a desired action. So a conversion it can be um, any kind of site goal. It could be kind of a micro conversion, like a click on a particular button. Uh, oftentimes we're designing our A-B test towards optimizing for macro conversions like purchases or transactions, trying to improve overall conversion rate of a website. And because CRO and investment in, in CRO as part of your overall digital marketing strategy focuses on increasing conversions once they're already on your website, um, you know, success there and improving your overall conversion rate can provide a lift to all of your different channels in digital marketing, right? It's kind of an upstream effect. And at the end of the day, you'll be more efficient in your ad spend and, and you'll see a bigger return everywhere um, for those channels that you invest in. So we talk about CRO and, and like I had alluded to, you know, how do we execute CRO? So we're really talking about on-site experimentation. So we wanna test user experience changes and then measure the results of those changes to make a determination as to whether they're the right move for your website going forward into the future. So just a quick summary of an A-B testing process. We try to take a scientific data-driven approach um, to everything that we do. And so we create a hypothesis as to which changes will positively affect user behavior. You know, basically this, this outline here, this framework, um, conjures up thoughts of the scientific method, if you want to think back to when you kind of learned how to investigate and experiment in different ways. So create a hypothesis. We then test that hypothesis against the current website experience or the control experience. And then we analyze the data, uh, draw a statistically significant conclusion, determine how to best proceed and whether it makes sense to incorporate that new experience that we just tested into the website permanently going forward into the future. So why is Agile qualified to help with generating or sharing some of our conversion testing ideas? Um, historically, over the you know, 15 or so years that we've been, been working with different partners on CRO, we've typically achieved a 30 to 40% testing win rate. Um, and that's versus an industry benchmark of about 10% or 15%, so depending on what industry uh, sources you, you use to, to find that sort of data. And when I talk about achieving an A-B test win, um, just to define that for everybody, I'm talking about achieving a 5% lift in your primary metric at 95% confidence. So what that means when you think about statistics and probability, um, achieving 95% confidence level, 95 out of 100, same as 19 out of 20. So that suggests that the changes that we saw in 19 out of 20 cases you know, that, that change can, can be ascribed to the actual um, test that we ran. You know, there's that likelihood of continuing that improved performance into the future. So that's kind of how we think about what qualifies or what um, an A-B test win really means. And typically we've been able to achieve a very successful rate in doing so. Um, and we'll pass it back over to Nick to talk. Yeah, I a little bit more about our framework. Yeah, that's a, 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 an amazing achievement. And obviously it just helps our clients so much, you know, to, to try to drive higher conversion rate makes all the other advertising just that much more successful. But um, we have to find where, where conversion actually fits because conversion rate optimization is not just a tactical thing. It has to be part of your strategy. And the way we we try to work on our strategies for clients and well, we believe this is the way you should do it for all of uh, e-commerce is stop thinking about like each channel as being a strategic initiative, but rather think about how all channels can work together on some shared initiatives. So you might have a desired outcome of having cold awareness and uh, kind of brand and demand generation you can use tools in Meta, TikTok, Google Ads, et cetera, to try to drive awareness. Same thing for consideration, which is when people are searching for your category, conversion, ticket, past visitor until they buy, loyalty, getting past customers to buy again, and advocacy, which is asking past customers for likes and shares. If you can increase the volume 
the quantity and the quality of activity in these five desired areas, it will virtuously support each other. And virtuously support each other as for the concept of a virtuous cycle. So we try to put effort into all these five. And when you start to look through the pillars of this unique framework, which is not that unique, everyone knows awareness to advocacy, but separating it and grouping it is something that takes discipline. You can then start to organize all of your plans in a way that drives your business forward. You can define what competitive advantage do I need? Um, am I balancing efficiency or long-term growth as performance? Where can I push my investments right now to grow faster? And how do I organize the multitude of segments that I cater to and give them the highest value possible? We're gonna to touch on three of these pillars today. The competitive side, performance, and messaging. Because investments is a retroactive deep dive of your investments. It's not theoretical, it's a little more tactical. So competitive strategy, what does it even mean? Um, we always start off with defining where do we need to press the hardest to be able to grow a business efficiently? And we basically define that all of e-commerce can be split into two different groups. There is a market where you might say, all of my customers, when they want to buy something that I would sell them, they would think, I want to buy this. So then they go to Google and they search for it and you've got to show up. And your entire strategy is going to be focused on showing up at the right time because people are thinking and then buying. A brand-based journey is a little different. Most of it is you going out to the right people and saying, I'm trying to build demand. I think you're like this, even though you're not thinking it right now. And maybe you can jump from that and buy. Question is, where do you all think you fall? If you had to kind of choose right now, you know, you think that people typically search for your category, all you gotta do is show up SEO, Google Ads, Pinterest, Amazon, that's a search-based journey. If you've got the situation where people just don't go out there and search that much, they just don't even know the concept, you've gotta go introduce it to them or brand means a lot. They wouldn't buy your $200 pair of jeans unless they knew your brand. So you gotta go out there and do that. Then you're a brand-based journey. You live and die by your awareness. Now, I will tell you before we share this, that our clients are split 70-30, search-based, brand-based. And virtually every webinar we do, we run this poll and it splits 70 search-based, 30 brand-based. But I will show you now, the results are 70-30 from this group as well. It's a truism, accept it, it's easy. If you fall outside of the search-based journey, you've got to understand how to navigate a brand-based journey really well. You've got to invest in meta. You've got to build awareness. But because we already predicted that 70% of you would be search-based journeys, we decided that the first few tests we'll cover are all search-based journey tests. So search-based, once again, is someone searched for something that they want. You showed up. And now with the least amount of friction possible, you want to say, you can buy from me. Come to my website, super easy, it's done. You got the transaction. The demand manifested itself and you captured it with no friction. And that puts the onus on us as UX experts to reduce friction. Absolutely, so in this particular instance, now, this is a great example of the search-based journey, as Nick just mentioned. So the key here is what we're trying to accomplish. How do we provide a, the quickest, most frictionless pathway to purchase that we possibly can? So as a user verifies the information on a product detail page, such as this one, right? we want to give them easy, seamless experiences, easy pathways to complete that purchase. So the test that we ran was adding a buy now button next to the add to cart. Um, allow the user to bypass the cart entirely 
and then proceed toward the bottom of the purchase funnel and, and make that purchase um, as easy as possible. And then the results from this particular test, no, quite successful. We did see a conversion rate increase overall during the duration of the test of nearly 5%. Um, but more strikingly, we saw a revenue per session increase of over 25%. So um, a very strong result here when trying to cater specifically to a search-based journey. Awesome. Um, here we have another example of a search-based journey. Again, looking to move people quickly through the funnel, eliminate any of that distraction. So this is the post add to cart light box, um, post add to cart experience as the control. Um, and when we look at the test we ran, um, all we really did was again, looking through, looking at removing any of those distractions, removing any sort of sticking point to make users not proceed to checkout. Um, so on the next slide, we can see recipe B, um, which just shows the changes that we made, including, um, oh, now I have slide control. <laughs> There we go. Recipe B. Um, we removed that continue shopping button. Um, you can see, and we increased the size of the view cart and checkout button, encouraging people to not go back and continue to browse, um, but instead to move forward in the funnel. Small change like that, seemingly small change like that for a search-based client saw a almost 11% increase in the conversion rate um, and a 15% increase in the revenue per session. So more people converting and more people spending more money, which is what we love to see. All right, so one final example here of a search-based journey uh, designed test. So we see here in the current website, floating navigation, you have links to their main product categories uh, and then the view cart button. So being a search-based journey, right, we wanna provide simple pathways to encounter, to discover all the items that those users may be intent on trying to purchase when they're on a particular site. So we decided to add an internal search function to that floating navigation, floating or sticky navigation. So now anywhere a user is on the site, how far down, how far down the page they are as they're scrolling, they have this option here um, to utilize internal search. So they're always you know, a click away from the product that they're looking for. Um, this is an, another good way to ensure that you know, search is um, at top of mind in site design and user experience, and that users are going to be able to easily find what they're looking for. This had a very significant um, improvement in its outcome. So this A-B test, nearly 15% lift in conversion rate, over 40% revenue per session increase. So, you know, certainly speaks to that search-based journey and that um, intent that users have on this particular website, being able to add that element and that functionality to ensure they're, they're always able to immediately search for what they're looking for and find it easily. And I love this one because it was like, in a search-based journey, when you, when you truly embrace the concept that search is so important to the user, Instead of you coming to Google, you bring Google into your website, right? And you let them continue that experience. They don't have to go back to Google to keep searching. Now they're stuck searching on your website. And 40% lift in revenue for a business with a single test is the dream. So um, with that, we've got seven more tests that we're going to cover. We're going to kind of talk about um, the strategic paradigms that allow us to define the right testing. But again, if you follow strategy to choose your tests, you can get that 30 to 40% win rate. If you just choose from, um, from random, then you get like a 10%, right? So what we do in a, um, a free custom testing strategy um, is we will analyze some of your data, give you a little bit of a device prioritization um, plan from our perspective, we're going to talk about the different areas of the funnel that we think you should focus on. We're going to have a discussion on search versus brand base and what that means for you. We're also going to get into modality recommendations, which we'll cover shortly. Should you be more spontaneous, more social, more methodical, more competitive in the UX? And then as you're prioritizing your tests, should you be prioritizing based on messaging, UX, hierarchy, or design? We don't charge for this. Um, 
this just helps us figure out, you know, the right lines to work with, whether we can actually do a good job and kind of build your business. We know testing in Q4 is not something people love to do. So it's, you know, put maybe if you're like, maybe Q1, uh, perfectly fine. But I wanted to ask you guys early on, before we go too deep into this, and it's nice when you work with a team that's been running tests across dozens of clients for over 15 years, figure out what could apply to your business and what you've been missing out on. The first 12 months, you could catch up on years worth of great ideas that should have been tested. And always remember, even when you lose in a test, you just saved yourself money by not hard coding it. So I'm gonna close this out in three, two, one. Um, okay, we'll take that. There's about 40 requests just now for us to reach out. So we'll, we'll reach out quickly. Um, we've, 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 we've got some next steps. Thanks folks. Um, okay, performance strategy, pillar number two of our approach. The performance strategy, we're just sitting down with you saying, business is difficult, we get it. If finances are rough right now, you need to tell us. We've got a solution for that. If all you want is growth, we've got a solution for that. And we need to figure these things out together. There's all these different goals that you can optimize towards, but you can break it in two different groups. Short-term is marketing efficiency ratio. I make... For every dollar that I make in revenue, how many pennies are going into marketing? That's your marketing efficiency ratio. If it's 8%, eight pennies of a dollar go back into marketing. You wanna reduce that as much as possible. The long-term side is, how can I increase my customer lifetime value? How can I get net new customers? What target CPA should I set? And we ask the businesses that trust us to help figure things out for them, our clients, on a quarterly basis. Like, what should we be doing now? Do you need us to keep things a little more short-term, focus more on efficiency, get you the cash flow? Should we hold efficiency and scale? That's long-term, or do you want us to have kind of this nice balance between the two? Again, whole. This is like not even for us. This is just for you to, to gut check yourself. If you had to choose one for yourself right now, going into Q1, would you say, struggling to get that efficiency back? I just want that. Or I'm fine on ROAS. I just wish I could grow again. That's long-term. And well-balanced is just give me those nominal wins on both sides. I want to be healthier and healthier and healthier and healthier in the sweet spot, the Goldilocks pocket. I'm going to share this in three, two, one. Really love this. So nice to see what your peers are thinking, especially because, like, I mean, we only hear the news about the economy, but what's actually going on? 14% of you want more efficiency, focused on cash flow on the short term. Twice as many of you are okay on that side. They just want, they just want growth. And 60% of you are mindful of being moderate, just right in the middle. Makes a lot of sense. Get a little bit of win on each side without disrupting either one. Fantastic. Thank you guys for sharing. And hopefully that was insightful. When when you apply those goals back to the principles of a virtuous activity cycle, the different areas where you're supposed to press, you want to decrease your marketing efficiency ratio, invest more in awareness, consideration, conversion. If you want to increase your customer lifetime value, invest more on loyalty and advocacy. If you want to drive up your cost per acquisition and get more aggressive with acquiring customers, invest more in awareness, consideration, conversion. And if you just want to drive net new, we just had one more thing in there. The virtuous cycle benefit of advocacy is phenomenal. You get your customers to like, share, and review. They're getting their friends to buy from you. Certain pages are hitting review thresholds that are going to double the conversion rate 
from before those reviews existed. That's why it's a virtuous cycle. It's not a cycle, it's a virtuous cycle. Awesome. So, so this yeah. test is an example of a brand based journey. Um, they are, their name would be synonymous with the service slash product that they offer. Um, so very much a brand based journey and they don't have much in terms of customer lifetime value. So for them, converting their net new customers is very important um, because to grow, they need to bring in new customers because there's not a ton of repeats. And so we want to convert those earlier on. So our control version of this test is just a landing page that has some customer testimonials on it. Um, but instead, because their service or product may be a little bit confusing and there's a lot of imitators out on the market, what we did instead on the variant and for the recipe B is we added this comparison chart to that same landing page to make the information a little bit more digestible for the user looking to purchase their service. Um, with that product comparison table, we saw a 4% increase in conversions um, and an 8% increase in revenue per session. So, you know, maybe not as big as Greg's 40% lift, but, you know, incrementally, like what would your business do if you had like another 8% of revenue than you did last year? Um, talking to a lot of clients planning for 2024, their goals are to grow in that eight to 12% range. So if you can get that from one test, like, cool, you hit your goals and then you can grow from there. So um, that's just a great example, I think, of, of the brand based and of a client that um, really needed to convert on the net new customer side of things. All right. So this next test here is a, we can see it's a wine purveyor. So the current site experience, this is a product listing page um, that they had in place. If we can see here, I know it's a little bit small, but the default quantity is 12 bottles or a full case of wine. So we thought about how do we engender a little more loyalty, you know, try to increase the number of net new customers, and then also increase customer lifetime value. So we tested out defaulting to a quantity of six bottles. It's a more palatable option. Um, we could anchor these users to a lower sort of initial price that they encounter on this type of page, might make them more likely to um, click through further or to add those items to the cart. So even if we had a slight decline in average order value, the hypothesis stated that we would likely see more gains in number of conversions that would outweigh things, uh, it would make a lot of sense to proceed there. So default quantity, now at a lower initial sort of anchoring price point for the user. And the outcome was a success. 6.6% uh, increase in conversion rate and nearly a 5% increase in revenue per session. So as we see, you know, the, the increase in conversions um, really did outweigh any sort of you know, negative pressure on, on AOV by starting at offering a lower price point. Oh, amazing. Nick will. Oh, right ahead. Yeah. Sorry, jumping in. Um, so the, the, the last pillar that we wanted to cover before we kind of do a shout out and say, put your URL into the questions box because we're going to spend some time doing live um, analysis for anyone who wants us to take a peek at the website and think about things from a strategic lens. So we're going to talk about messaging strategy. So messaging strategy, typically our approach is fairly simple. We believe that a business typically is catering to two to three core segments, but they are a little bit um, delineated if you organize that way. We want to think about for each of those different segments, which parts of the VAC would we want to go after? What is the expected customer lifetime value? What kind of products? and price positioning do we want to focus on? And what kind of messaging do we want to go out there with? And a big part of that is just borrowing from the consumer behavioral sciences. Um, back in 3000 BC, the uh, ancient Egyptians came up with this concept that there's four different types of humans. In 460 BC, Hippocrates started to put this down into code and uh, the, it's called the humoral sciences. The yes, there are four different types of people. There are people who have like very clean blood, they're sanguine, they're social. Uh, there's a yellow bile, black bile, et cetera. It came up with these four same 
prototypes, archetypes. In the 1950s, consumer behavioralists were basically saying people buy through known behavior, said, let's borrow these concepts because if a brand can align themselves with one of these modalities and make the user experience rich in that particular flow, it activates something human in us to finish our purchase. We activate purchases at a higher rate. And the four different types are competitive. Uh, competitive is basically, you know, what I see is maybe a fancy price point, but with all the imagery I'm 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 seeing here and some buy-in, I'm willing to pay the premium. Spontaneous is I don't know if I should walk away from this. It's a pretty good deal. I should go ahead and buy it. I'm going to miss out otherwise. Social is never done this before. Someone hold my hand up this learning curve because I've got to figure this out. And methodical is, I know a thing or two about what I'm buying. Tell me that you can fit my criteria and then we'll talk about options. And the question we're going to ask all of you is, when you think about the segments you cater to, what, uh, which modalities do you think apply to you? Again, competitive. Some segment that you cater to is willing to pay a premium price. They just need to believe in the premium value. Spontaneous. You got a discount section that goes like gangbusters and you know how to get people to buy from your email list and your clearance section. Social. People need reviews. They need editor's choice. They engage with your chat window. They're always trying to figure out how to make the decision. Methodical. People need to narrow their their selection based on specific criteria, otherwise they can't buy. Okay, and you can choose multiple. And we're gonna close this out in three, two. Oh, so much activity still. One and close. Okay, 66% oh, believe that there's at least one segment of theirs that's methodical. That's really, it's great. It's great to acknowledge that of your customers. 43% uh, know that clients come in a little nervous, customers come in nervous, and you've got to help them figure out their decision making. 39% you're selling something that was it's going to make someone feel self actualized. And 18%, especially in an economy that's a little tough, are doing spontaneous. That's good. It's healthy. We can take spontaneous so far, it's phenomenal. Everyone's going to get a copy of this presentation and a recording. You can spend some time on reading through this at that time. But there's a library of techniques and ideas that come with saying, my customers are competitive. And you can bring that into your user experience, your email, your digital marketing on display, the way you talk about your products in search ads, so you actually want to position yourself as the best. You want loyalty from these elite customers. You want to be dramatic with your imagery. You want influencers to say, yeah, I buy that. Premium phrases, detailed copy that elicits the right imagery. Don't say a lot when you're trying to show imagery. Focus on limited products and new products because people want to be in. They also want to invite only because it makes them feel more special. Publicity kind of well, cinches the deal, especially with lead gen. Focus on lifestyle if it's an adrenaline lifestyle, which is also part of the competitive world. And of course, love to buy aspirational celebrities. We do that for a lot of our clients. Works really well. Methodical, 66% of you. If you're trying to figure out how to get your customers to walk through the maze of your products to find the right one, buyer's guides, chat box, problem search, problem-based search, qualifier-based search, a lot of features, benefits, ads, binder tools, fitment tables, like for you know five log, six log rims with a certain wheel well, photos from all angles, value images. These are the main things you get from our product. 
buyer's protections. That's comparison between competitors. Cross sells that they're gonna need. Reviews based on features like Yakpo has. User generated content videos and FAQs. So we got some, some test ideas that align with these different modalities. Uh, Rebecca, can you talk through one of the uh, methodical ones? I can. Um, so this example is a um, site that sells key car key fob replacements. Um, and obviously very methodical, like you have a specific make and model that you're looking to find um, and just want to know that the item that you're purchasing will meet, meet your needs um, from a car. So um, the change that we made from the control um, to the, the variant is just centralizing everything and making it very clear um, which make and model you're looking at. You know, you don't know if your users are reading left to right alphabetically, if they're reading up and down. Um, let's remove some of the distracting elements. And again, search-based journey, removing the distraction um, for a methodical shopper, like making it very clear which individual element the user is looking at. The results of this test, we saw a 13% increase in conversion rate and a 58% increase in revenue per session. So just making it that much easier for users to find what they're looking for, not getting them distracted, not getting them overwhelmed with different button colors, um, made that purchase a lot easier for them. And it showed in the data. You can just stop working if you do one test like this. <laughs> the entire year, you're just done. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> social modality. Social modality is once again, your customers, I'll give you a great example. Apple used to use CompUSA and Circuit City. If you remember CompUSA and Circuit City, then you're part of my generation or older. Um, I worked at Circuit City. Um, they used to have these sections that tried to sell out beautiful sections of each of the stores. But the salespeople, didn't want to take someone who was using a PC and try to teach them how to use an Apple. It was too much work. Just sell them a PC. They don't know Apple, sell them a PC. Apple said, nope, we're going to build a storefront where people come in, whether you're eight years old or 80 years old, we're going to teach you how to use Apple. And lo and behold, highest per square foot income of any storefront ever created until then. They defined social modality experience. Now you can digitize that. So you've got testimonial ads, website ratings, product ratings, rating search. Um, when you're doing your, your targeting on a search-based journey, target popular and trending phrases, a chat box uh, to help find products and gifts. You want to respond to posts. You want a lot of user-generated content so people can say, someone like me bought that product. They didn't know what they were doing, and they're happy. Editors picks to pick from the, the the group of everything. Authority badges to give you comfort. Customer support when you hit a dead end. Personalized suggestions. The better the AI, the better. Product reviews, UGC videos that help you see the entire product, unboxing, etc. And a community section for questions. All right, so this might not jump out at you as a social modality type of example, right? This is a website where you can see the product there. Um, it's a medical device or medical products for personal care. But when you really think about it, what's the most important information that you need to get in order to convince you to make a purchase? So you want to know that the product itself is trustworthy, that others have utilized it in the past and been delighted with, with how it operated, right? So Social proofing can be very important on a lot of different types of websites that you, you might not think are, are similar at first glance. But what we did was we decided to test out including real customer reviews at this point in the journey when we're already in the cart page. So we have a carousel here of, of customer reviews, provide that last bit of you know, psychological reassurance to help get the user over the finish line, uh, help them realize that this is a trustworthy site. These are um, this is a company that's that's worth purchasing from, and I'm going to be very satisfied with that purchase at the end of the day. So the outcome for this particular test, again, a, another really strong improvement, almost a 30% lift in conversion rate during the test duration, and a 35% increase in revenue per session. 
Um, this is another example of a social modality for clients. Um, you know, this product is often you know, shared. They sell funny cards. Um, so something that you kind of want to get more of that social proof and social buy-in. Um, we combined this one. That's the funniest with... card ever, by the way. That's so funny. <laughs> It is I good. Love it. I love this card. <laughs> um, so you, you want to, this, this test was kind of like a combination, right? So it's, it's a search-based um, journey. So again, going back to eliminating the friction between landing on product page, checking out, and then adding more of those social elements to the site. Um, so this test combined a number of changes to the site. Um, you can see some of the changes we made here. We removed the breadcrumbs instead of having all of these um, kind of kicker images for the main image, we just implemented a scroller. The goal of that was to move this add to cart button higher onto the page. Um, we also clarified some messaging um, where it previously said greeted or blank, changed that language to with inside message and no inside message. And then the most social element here is just adding those reviews um, a lot closer to the add to cart button so that when users are finding that add to cart button, they're kind of in the back of their mind seeing that five-star review underneath um, and wanting to make that purchase knowing that others have enjoyed this product and this very funny card. Um, the results of this test, we saw a 22% increase in conversion rate and a 33% increase in revenue per session. So big numbers um, and really important for a site like this who has a fairly low AOV. Um, so we love to see these big wins on these sites. Awesome. And very shortly, um, we're going to go ahead and pull up websites um, and kind of walk through a few ideas that we might have for you on the fly. Not so scientific, but we're going to try to, to to use our framework and and our, our perspective on this. Um, people, a few people have already put their their website names in. So we'll kind of take it in the order that uh, you've typed in the questions box. Here you are all. Okay, a few more just came through. Thank you, thank you. Um, yep, so before we get to that, spontaneous modality. Spontaneous modality is like, if you could just get someone who is kind of interested in your product and your category, and you give them something so tantalizing that they're like, ah, what the hell, I just buy it. Uh, Express, that uh, Simon Mall store that everyone knows, um, does this the best. They do like floor to ceiling font that says 80% off eight times a year. And you walk in and there's a bucket that says 80% off medium. And you put your arm in the bucket and you pull out a t-shirt. You don't even know what you're buying. You're so drawn to the spontaneous message, you don't even care what you're buying. As long as it's in that bucket and it's your size, that's the power of a spontaneous. But you've got to create an animalistic experience. You've got to get font and colors that are so chaotic that people think that they're stealing from you. First purchase offers, mega sales, low supply, flash sales and time bound. Limited supply is a little different from low supply new products. Very aggressive palettes and font that just blind you. Loyalty programs and discounts based on being a loyal customer. Countdown cards that make your heart race. Discounts if you sign up for email or SMS. And free bonuses. That's our perfume sales for the holidays. It's all free bonuses. We had a few tests in the spontaneous vein. All right, so this particular test that we're talking about here, we're looking at a cart page. And with a spontaneous modality, you're trying to engender feelings of excitement, right? So here it helps to think a little bit about the psychology of color. We see here the primary call to action um, is red. You know, red can, I guess, can know feelings of anger, kind of looks a little bit like stop sign almost, right? Our test that we ran, um, included changing the button to green. So in addition to go, as in move forward, or in our case, our case, proceed to checkout and complete the purchase, 
You know, green has a mixture of the two primary colors, blue and yellow. Blue is often used to create a sense of security and trust in a brand. The color yellow can represent optimism, you know, youthfulness can be used to grab attention. So we think about sort of the combination of all of those things. Um, green also connotes you know, life and vitality. We see here this particular um, item is uh, you know, a children's kind of backyard um, play item. So going with green there for this button, a whole host of reasons why we hypothesize that would be um, or provide a more positive outcome would affect user behavior in the way to get them to click through and, and proceed toward the purchase. Um, and that's exactly what we saw. So 23% lift in conversion rate, nearly 16% increase in revenue per session. And so that was test number nine. And now Rebecca has uh, our final test that we're sharing, test number 10. Lovely. Thank you. So um, this final test we're reviewing um, is for a methodical shopper. Um, this client sells garage door parts and supplies to both residential homeowners who are making a DIY fix, as well as um, more commercial buyers who are you know, doing repairs, um, so repairmen, and then also um, maybe small business owners who have a commercial business and, you know, they need parts for their docking areas and things like that. So previously, um, this was a test that was done in conjunction with our SEO program. Um, so we had made the hypothesis that this should be split into um, and target these different customer types. Um, it was also going to help emphasize their key areas. So on the SEO side, we made our recommendations of what the new um, navigation should look like and how we wanted it to function from a search standpoint. Um, and then we tested it using um, our testing program. Um, so the control had everything under a shop by category and a shop by brand and then top sellers. Um, you can see nothing really stands out. It was just a large list of categories. Um, nothing was really highlighted other than those that were bolded within the text. And then our um, recipe B that we tested was breaking out our general door parts and accessories, and then the items specific to residential and commercial buyers. And within each of these flyouts, we added specific categories um, and tried to group the different product types based on whether it was weather seal kits or um, you know, springs or replacement remotes, things like that. Um, so each of these categories got a much cleaner section um, within the top navigation. And as a result, we did see a 6% lift, 6.5% lift in conversion rate and a 14% lift in the revenue per session. Um, so really good results just speaks to how um, A, we can work together from an SEO and conversion standpoint, and then B, um, how speaking to your shoppers, you know, when you know that they're a thoughtful shopper um, can really improve your overall site conversion. Amazing. Okay, so there's a, a lot of requests for live QA, for live uh, conversion audits. Greg, do you have any queued up on your side that you wanna tackle first? I think we should go in the, uh, in the order that people populated them. So, okay. And have you had a chance to look at any of them yet? Yep, just a little bit behind the scenes here. So okay. um, are you able so to bring up? Yep. Like at MC Nickel Financial? Sounds Nickel good. Nickel Financial, sorry. Let's do that one first. Like Nickel Financial. So, and I think all you know, all three of us can certainly chime in with ideas. We can make this pretty, <laughs> pretty conversational. Um, but certainly, you know, information heavy, right? I mean, to um, convey a lot initially. One thing that did stick out, or could be something worth testing, is some sort of call to action in the header. Um, as you see, as you scrolled down the page, that navigation is, is sticky. It, you know, it follows you around. So having that information very present and accessible um, 
throughout the website as, as users are digesting the information, I think could go a long way. Um, so something like the phone number, contact button, um, even internal search may make sense to look at here. We talk about a search-based journey, um, Medicare education, right? I think that could be something that would benefit as well. So there are some good ways here to provide some different pathways to identify and to encounter the information that's necessary to move forward and, and open lead with this company. Um, and then also include maybe some more obvious prominent calls to action um, in prominent areas through the site. Yeah, and I think highlighting reviews will probably be important here too. Just, you know, Google calls them the your money, your life sites and certainly like having that verification of it being a um, like a trustworthy site, I think would be important, especially in this space. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know. But just based on the user experience, I want to check what this looks like. There was some some font kind of moving around a little bit. Yeah, so device wise, um, this is not rendering the best way possible. Probably want to think about either switching to <clears throat> responsive or adaptive. Although the call to action is a little more powerful with Calendly here. Mm -hmm. on the on the mobile side and don't see any ads running to uh, the website that you could create kind of a, a meaningful infrastructure around and not a lot of um, search keywords at this moment either the most the page that's getting the most um, Visibility from an SEO standpoint is this page. And I postulate that maybe some of that is because of duplicate content on the other pages. Uh, Greg, what do you want to go to next? All right, let's go to the Galapagos. I think that sounds like a fun journey yeah. for all of us. That would be um, amazing. So this is link in here to So the question is about these course. landing pages specifically. So spring cruise, um, summer cruises, right? Some of these types of pages. Um, there we go. Some thoughts we had here. So this is a very, you know, very expensive, you know, luxury item, a trip like this, it's aspirational. So it certainly um, falls under that competitive modality. So some of those types of tactics would be important to employ here. So those could be things like ensuring you have very dramatic imagery. I mean, you know, the hero image, of, of course, is is you know pretty pretty cool and, and beautiful, but maybe even a, a carousel of a dramatic imagery. There's some good imagery further down the page as well. I would suggest that the testimonials here could be very powerful. Um, even trying to solicit or even display longer versions of these. You know, detailed reviews um, for things that are onto that competitive modality, um, luxury type items and, and travel, um, you know, that can be the type of thing you'd want to make sure to prioritize or mm -hmm. service for users to move the needle. Yeah, I, I would just add that this is, um, this is probably a brand Based journey opportunity here to, to develop a lot more demand for traveling to the Galapagos. And outside of anyone who's read Origin of Species, I'm sure there's a lot of other people that want to go to Galapagos for other reasons. We have uh, Pat Patagonia as well. If one of our employees is on her way back from Patagonia right now, another one is on her way out to Patagonia. So becoming very popular with the Americans. Um, there's this balance of, of um, social and competitive, I think, is is right. But bringing that into display ads would probably be even more helpful. People who are thinking about and planning uh, a more exotic trip um, to know how gorgeous, how safe, and how happy your customers are 
with the trip would be very powerful. Just also taking a look at how you're running ads here. A lot of ads going right into family vacations and family tours. So the look overall look and feel of the website doesn't evoke as much family tour. Um, it it's kind of more like a, a explorers tour, maybe for couples, maybe maybe for single people. Um, and maybe the homepage should connect those dots on the segmentation side a little bit more. Any other thoughts, Rebecca? All right. No, not on this one. I had shared some of them separately with Greg, so he's taking my ideas now. <laughs> nice. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to steal them. No, <laughs> it's okay. I was looking. I was looking at petty fix in the meantime um mm. search-based journey for sure we would think um you know people looking for insoles and um medical foot care products um so i navigated to a product page just to kind of see knowing that you know people are probably going to come in either on a category or a product level page um and found myself on a product page that has reviews, I think, you know, something like this, people are really going to want to know that it's comfortable. Um, so the reviews currently are on a product page are placed kind of towards the top, right underneath the product name, um, but potentially testing moving those below or right near the add to cart button, um, you know, maybe highlighting the number of reviews a little bit larger um, could be helpful, you know, using some um, there's all sorts of like AI technology out there now that will, um, talk about like the features and benefits, the pros and cons. So like if people find it like very comfortable or helpful, like calling out those keywords a little higher on the page, perhaps. Um, and then I think also with, you know, maybe not this particular product, but maybe with some of the insoles, like if, if there is any sort of like fit guarantee or anything like that, um, highlighting that I think could be useful as well. And you'll hear us talking a lot about like messaging testing. And, you know, I think a lot of times people are like, what about design? What about the colors? And it's important, but we find it to be much less impactful than getting the right message across to your users. Plus messaging testing is a lot cheaper to implement. So when it comes time to hard coding these changes to your site, a lot of times it's going to be um, a lot less from a development standpoint compared to if you know, we looked at the North Shore test, like redoing the entire top navigation is a lot heavier lift um, than, you know, just changing around some existing elements or highlighting different messaging props. I, I would also say, because it's like straddling methodical and social, take your top products that have so many reviews and maybe try to create a user-generated video or an all angles video, a how-to, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be prioritized to all products, um, but also good time to realign your your Google shopping is emphasizing products um, in this order, and you know this product that has a good amount of reviews but not the highest overall review versus this has more than twice as many a four and a half star. Um, creating alignment between what you want to show visibility for. And how you want to drive that to the user experience could also that site realignment can be helpful. Um, that might be a couple of questions I saw in the chat. Um, <clears throat> make sure we answered those. Um, Brandon's asking what testing software we use. Um, Greg, do you want to speak about our preference? Sure, absolutely. So the majority of, of stores that we work with are utilizing VWO. It's one of three Google approved um, AB testing platforms that they're going to make sure that they have native integration with GA4, which is certainly important. So as Google optimized Sunset, you know, there, there's a need to move to a new platform for a lot of folks. So VWO used to be called Visual Website Optimizer. That's what the VWO stands for. Uh, so there's that one and Optimizely and AB Tasty, I believe are the, the three sort of held up as best in class um, in Google's eyes. But we have worked with um, partners in SiteSpec, um, Optimizely, AB Tasty, 
a um, number of different platforms, Adobe Tested Target. Um, so we do have familiarity with, with a lot of different ones, but we do have VWO as, as our preferred solution right now. The, the next one, California Furniture Store, is one that's close to the heart. Lauren has joined us for almost every webinar for probably at least a decade. Um, is a VIP. So let's um, take a closer look at this one. Greg, Rebecca, have either of you had a chance to start looking at it? Made it to a product page <laughs> on that site. Um, let me just pull that up. Um, so I'm concerned about this, by the way. In June of 23, you were ranking for 10,800 keywords. You're down to 3,000 now. Let us know if you want an SEO audit as well. Happy to take a look at that. Um, on the product page side of things, um, I see a lot of things that I like on the product. Um, you know, I like the free shipping to California and Nevada messaging near the price. Um, I like that we have our shopper ratings on there, but I wonder if it's a little distracting from the product itself. And I wonder if we try moving the actual product ratings themselves higher on the page, um, how that would perform. Um, cause we have our shopper approved, like overall site, right. Site wide rating, um, at the top, these lights keep going up, um, at the top, but not the uh, product itself. So, you know, I think if I'm purchasing a bed or some other large piece of furniture, I want to see, um, actual users review user reviews of the item. And, you know, probably the, the seller itself reviews would be secondary for me. Cool. Um, any other thoughts, Greg, from your side? Yeah, I just noticed in the, the cart, I added an item to cart to see what that experience looked like. And some of these live examples, we haven't really delved into cart checkout too much. But um, like one of the examples we discussed a bit earlier, that can be a good area to surface social proofing as well. We have seen some tests do very well with carousels of reviews or reiterating the overall star rating and number of reviews. Um, you know, those sorts of things that at this piece of the journey, especially on desktop, there's a little bit more real estate that's available to work with. And, and we can incorporate different elements that don't just come, you know, in a stock uh, cart page um, from an e-com platform. Yeah, I, I would just say that you could tell that you're a mix between um, search-based or uh, social modality and methodical. Um, you've got some really clear value propositions up at the top um, of the pages. Just holding steady on that is a recommendation. I yeah, I guess one, one thing that's time. not clear too, when we get to the card, it says we only ship to California and Nevada, but then throughout the site, it says free shipping. So for me in Massachusetts, I feel like, okay, maybe I'll be paying for shipping, but then I get to the cart and I'm like, okay, I can't even buy this. Um, so I think just making sure that messaging is consistent. Yeah, and the value propositions that you have in the desktop version at the top are missing here. So you're taking out the methodical element. You're taking out some of the social proof. So some of the oomph that comes from modality alignment is missing in probably the most used device of mobile. All right. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six more that people have asked for. So Greg, I ask you to choose one. Uh, Rebecca, you choose one. I'll choose one and we'll both. Or if you guys want to take two each, we have a little time. If you guys are here for five more minutes, let's do this. Two yeah. each. All right. What are you taking, Rebecca? I am taking, I'll just take the next two in line. Um, so okay. health site. Cool. And uh Sonosim. And... Uh Greg, Greg, you want to take Brahmin and claim buyout? Yep. Sounds great. Awesome. I'll take four imprint and DIY packed.
And you guys let me know when you're ready. Folks, is this, this is good? Are we doing something that's that's meaningful here? Because we're having fun. Mm -hmm. so. All right, I think I'm ready. Okay, which one? Um, the first one. UtivaHealth.ca. Yep. Awesome. So I would guess search-based journey, um, people looking for, um, for medical supplements for UTI prevention. So I would think that people are searching for a kind of like problem solution based um, queries, not necessarily um, around the brand terms. Um, but I think if we go to a product page, um, I like a lot of what I'm seeing on the product page. Um, probably items that we would test. Um, there's a lot of information, um, understandably so, on the product page, um, just about reviews and how the product works. Um, so when you scroll down on the page, you might get a little lost. So potentially testing a sticky add to cart button. Um, so if people are gathering information and they get to the point where they have all the information they need to make the purchase, they can add directly from there or something that will like bring them back up to the subscribe and save option. Um, if we add something to the cart as a one-time purchase and go to checkout, I wonder if testing like a post, if someone selects like a one-time purchase option, testing a post add to cart light box that offers the subscribe and save um, to try and entice people to, you know, add some more time and, and some more savings to um, their cart. And the only other thing would maybe be like, again, people want, um, like confirmation that this is going to work. So any sort of, you know, we have the hundred percent money back guarantee. So maybe emphasizing that messaging or emphasizing, um, like I'm looking at uh, cranberry PACs, like 4.9 stars on almost 4,500 reviews is a lot. Um, so potentially we can kind of increase the size of that messaging, um, as well. Awesome. Uh, Greg, do you want to, Greg, you want to go with uh, your first one? Sure, let's do it. Just something we haven't quite touched on in these live examples. I looked at a product listing page. So if you want to click on, I don't know, what do you feel like shopping for next? Some handbags? Um, the Georgina looks amazing. Oh, I, I said, sorry, product listing pages. So category pages. Oh, sorry, sorry. Rather okay. than, so just, yep, no worries at all. That's two engravings. Oh, nice. Good thing. Okay, great. That's a little different. So on a product listing. It's okay. a, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's got a little bit of a value prop there to engrave, so here we yep. go. Okay. So to me on product listing pages, right, you always want to make sure you have the optimal set of filters in place. So some types of things you could test, you know, well, first you could collect more data on what types of filtering users are interacting with, whether that's different for new versus returning users. Um, you could test out having some of those filter categories uh, open or, or versus minimized as they are now upon initial page load. Uh, number of things you can do there just to make it as easy as possible for users to find their most likely product assortment that they'll be interested in finding. Um, I also noticed here too, so there's an option for sorting by rating, yet the ratings themselves are not present on these product item cards, right? So I would definitely surface star rating, uh, number of reviews at this, at this point in the process, um, this point in the customer journey. Also the, the word exclusive, it's an exclusive offering Right, it's part of, um, I imagine like a, you know, a, a unique item that only you have. 
I would probably redesign that to make it look more like a, a badge or something a little bit more flashy in that item card rather than just the text um, exclusive. So I think there are a couple ways that we could likely a better curate the product mix at the outset or allow users to do that themselves more easily. And then be also convey a little bit more information at this step or this stage of their journey through the website. Anything else coming yeah. to mind here, Nick? Just noticing also that some of the exclusives like this one is not exclusive. It's also discoverable elsewhere. Um, if, if that, uh, I don't know what, what the uh, relationship is between you and your resellers and whether you're supposed to create some symbiosis there, balance, but um, trying to figure out the the um, multi-channel strategy there. Um, yeah, I think also your price point is is a little high, but it's not super premium. So it's okay for you to to veer from competitive a little bit more into social. It's a, it's an accessible luxury price. So you don't need to, you know, live by hard and fast rules like we'll never show reviews because it cheapens our product. If you're if you were selling handbags that were, you know, Birkins or anything that's like let's say Bottega, maybe like two thousand to 20,000, yeah, you don't want to cheapen anything, but here you might just want to be guiding people towards making the perfect purchase for themselves, kind of the first accessible luxury that they're buying for themselves. Um, I'll take four imprint real quick. So I uh, love the website. It's really clean and calming. Um, yeah, despite the fact that there's a lot that you want to kind of go through. Um, in my, my former uh, career like 20 years ago, I was an ASI PPAI um, uh, dealer, and I know that um, it's tough for people to figure out exactly what they want. And you guys have this kind of like social experience that you can guide people through. You know, you want a T-shirt. You know, it's for a trade show. But given the the massive quantity of sales that your website does and the data you has have available. You can probably encourage things more like top picks for 24, tchotchkes under five bucks that are top sellers. Um, I noticed that sometimes you have like these inroads, um, like a curated magic merch, magical merch side, which is, is nice, but maybe for trade shows of different categories, for example, or um, what's best for your for your church fundraiser? What are top selling, top trending? So we're just bringing a lot more social aspects in that are not just reviews and talk to our people, but we've also compiled and curated some good recommendations. Um, also seeing that you know from a PPC standpoint, some of the products that you're getting the most love to um, are products like this that are. A little bit higher price, a little unique, but probably not your highest um, quantity, your highest volume producers. So it's a two part here. One, uh, reform your performance max strategy to take your top sellers in high quantity and isolate them in their own campaigns. So you can drive more traffic towards a page like, um, like one of your top sellers, as opposed to just this one that's a little unique to your website. And then double down on product specific, high volume parts, product specific um, optimization. Okay. Uh, I'm back. I'm ready. Cool. So All no right. sense. Um, cool. For a service slash product I don't know a lot about, um, a couple of things that kind of stood out to me um, on the site were when I went to, um, say like our learn, so under ultrasound education ecosystem and going to the learn category page, um, the big call to action here um, and that first banner is to play a video um, compared to let's talk ultrasound. So perhaps testing kind of the call outs of those different calls to action. Um, in the site in general, like the accessibility I think is 
I think if we were to run the Lighthouse Accessibility Score, looking at like the contrast between font colors and font size, um, usually we honestly don't even have to test those things. We'll probably be winners, but it could be interesting. Like if from a brand standpoint, you know, you're really, you know, stuck and not stuck on, but like dedicated to these colors schemes and these font types, like just looking at, you know, increasing font size, increasing contrast, like this form is so hard to read. It's like, um, I think just, you know, making the outlines black, testing which form elements maybe we could remove. If, are we gonna get a higher form fill rate if we um, remove the section that says, how should we address you or put name in a single field? Um, that type of thing can help increase the completion rate of those form fills um, on the site. And I'm curious what, what the outcome or the desired outcome of this is, you know, are they, are you gonna be part of the training courses? Are you gonna get support in other ways? What is, what is let, let's talk ultrasound me specifically? The more you define a call to action scope, the better. Mm -hmm. Okay, Greg, play him by it. Good. So to echo a little bit of what Rebecca said about the accessibility and color contrast, I do think the blue on black could potentially be a little bit difficult for um, some folks to read. So I would you know, consider perhaps changing some things there. Um, and as you mentioned in, in the Q&A module, which I appreciated, this kind of a would you consider a new or one of a kind service, um, selling your damaged car, getting a buyout on that rather than going ahead and repairing it. So education is of the utmost importance, right? Conveying your value um, to users once they enter the site as easily as possible, get them to understand exactly what the process is, what they need to do. So I would test different versions of some of your landing pages. Like I'd imagine the homepage gets a lot of traffic. The How It Works page is likely another popular entry point into the site. Um, so working on optimizing the different sections of the page, you know, playing around with the page hierarchy of the different elements, um, trying to learn really what re resonates the most with your users when they're on the site, as far as understanding exactly what the process is and then what they need to do. Um, as far as the main call to action form, you know, getting that free offer. I think that design, you know, is fairly clean. Um, some things you might want to do around font size, um, those sorts of things. But with a service that's maybe a little bit unfamiliar to some folks, and you know, prioritizing or showing that that star rating in a more in a more prominent way could be beneficial as well. Um, but I think working to ensure you have the optimal hierarchy of elements, the informational elements um, to educate the user as quickly as possible is, uh, is paramount here. I could also imagine a, a button that says something along the lines of like, get, get a confirmed offer on your damaged vehicle now. Like it's something that's just so clear. Like what is the free offer? Is like, you know, free hat. Like what is the, or oh, you're getting an offer. You're actually getting an offer on your claim that the ambiguity of the term itself might be a little tough. Um, sure. Like you you were suggesting, Greg, there's only three pages that are getting all the traffic, really. Um, the About Us, the How It Works, and mainly the homepage. So best to optimize. And then let's see, the last one is DIY pack. We actually used this service before. My wife uh, a couple of years ago wrote a, a book about the six essential spices in uh, Indian cooking and their history of uh, how they shaped the world and and medicine and food since uh, ancient Samaria 6,000 years ago. And it came with a book and this filler and the spices and the box, perfect Christmas gift. Um, it actually looked exactly like this. Um, I I love the concept. Um, and I think just as someone who's actually bought from the website before, 
Um, would love to have seen many, many more examples of your customers using the product, design ideas, um, understanding the quality of the print, the, the depth of um, how the ink sets in, et cetera. Like these things matter, durability. So it's all, it's just this, this perfect balance between methodical, because I've got to get it perfect, and, um, and social. Show me that other people who've taken a risk on this type of idea um, have come out successful. Um, the other thing was contents fitting in to these boxes are sometimes a little tough. We have a client that that does kind of this uh, origami style mailer approach. We manage all their, their advertising. We've helped them grow quite a bit over the last five plus years. I uh, would love to talk to you guys um, about uh, our growth plan. So that's it. I think we covered a lot. Hopefully this was helpful, guys. Um, we don't always do live QA, but really enjoyed doing that. Shall um, we necessary disclaimer that these should all be tested or implemented if you know you came to a testing webinar i hope it's implied but <laughs> yeah you know what we didn't show you were the ones that the tests we ran that we thought were going to be winners that bombed oh, so God. we will revisit maybe that in a follow-up webinar that's a great webinar <laughs> the best <laughs> ideas that fail <laughs> and well, the insights you gain from them to be able to iterate and improve right there you go yeah, if you, you do a test like a like a modality test in a conversion environment, clean A, B with controls, and you know now which modality to go with, it can permeate all of your rest of your market. It's just the, the central node. But um, folks, you stayed, you stayed, you stayed over 20 minutes extra. Um, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, hope we get a chance to talk soon. There were a lot of requests to reach out and set up some next steps. Uh, you'll be talking to the three of us on your call. So um, looking forward to it. Happy holidays. Greg, thank you so much. Thanks for bringing the wisdom of, of the, the testing. Um, it's People don't know what's going on behind the scenes here. It's it's uh, you, you, you brought us into the, the Mad Wizard factory. So thank you for that. Rebecca, thank you for grounding us in strategy. So all the dots connect carefully. <laughs> And uh, thank you, folks, for taking time. Thank Bye you, everyone. Nick. Greg, thanks, everyone. Thank you all so much. Talk soon. Bye.